All right, Crisis fans, Daniel Kaiser here for GT on the E3 2010 stage, joined by Nathan from Crytek. We're taking a look at the game, one of the biggest games of the show. Why don't you walk us through what we're seeing here in Crisis 2? Yeah, so this is the Central Station exterior level. Um, in this level, the, the Marines are falling back. They're holding Central Station here, which you can see from the, the imagery. And it, this is a more open style of space that Crisis is really, really famous for, open sandbox kind of gameplay that, that we're well known for. Um, what, what, the, uh, what, what the player is doing right now is taking advantage of opportunities that we give in Crisis games, which is allowing you to survey the terrain and figure out which route you want to go. So you can take the bridge and you know be kind of like an action hero, or you can find a route to sneak around the side. But right now you need to support the Marines and it's up to you how you decide to do it. Um, there's aliens coming from all sides in all directions, so very soon you know the player's going to jump in and engage in this action. Excellent. You guys are showing so much of the uh the action elements of the game, obviously, but really choosing your own style of play is very, very important here, right? Yeah, it, what we noticed after Crisis 1 was we gave the person a lot of suit powers in order to, th they could decide how they wanted to play the game. Um, but what we realized was people were combining these styles together into a, a type of gamer style. And so you could play, uh, you know, people were playing like a, a predator, quite literally hunting their enemy as they move through the environment. Um, or they were playing as like an action hero and jumping in the middle of action and trying to survive as much gunfire as possible. So what's awesome about Crisis 2 is that we combine the intensity of a linear FPS, like a lot of dime a dozen FPS games are out on the market right now, with uh, systemic sandbox gameplay that Crisis is famous for and well known for. So when we need to, we can tell you a story. When we want to give you open space to explore the game the way that you want to, you can. And we give you lots of tools in a sandbox. So, um, you know, just a moment ago, we saw him kick a cab on an alien. He kicked it over the edge, over the bridge, and squashed an alien with it. You know, if he wants to play uh, a little bit more protected and use cover and lean, he can use cover and lean, which is in the game. Uh, he can stealth and sneak around. You know, there's lots of opportunities for the player to play it in different ways based on the style of what they play. If you, you know, if you just jump in, and play it like every other FPS on the market, it will play that way for you. But we give you the tools that you can do more. So the game grows with you. You learn what the sandbox elements are, and then you want to go back and play levels again. Like, I didn't know I could do that with a cab. I didn't know I could do that with a barrel. You know, I didn't know I could sneak around and do such awesome things. So that's what makes Crisis 2 really, really cool. Obviously, the setting has changed. The game is in New York, so you move from the jungle to the urban jungle. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the level design and how you want to facilitate the, the various types of gameplay within this environment. Yeah, so, um, you know, going back in Crytek's history, we did Far Cry, Crisis, and Crisis Warhead, and all of these were set in jungles. And to be honest, I mean, we got really good at making jungles, yeah. but we also got we tired got of seeing out. green. Yeah, <laughs> got a little burned out. Um, but, you know, in the fiction of the universe as well, we wanted to move the storyline ahead a number of years. And if you look at, at the Crisis, uh, Crisis franchise and the, and the story from the first one, eventually this, this uh, conflict would move beyond isolated jungle islands into centers of population. So when you do that, you gotta look at all the cities on the earth and where might you put Crisis 2 at. And at the end, New York always came up to the top of the list of all the cities that we were looking at. Not only for its uh, character and, and storytelling capabilities, you know, you, you, New York is an awesome city that has had many, many stories told there. But you can always tell a different story anytime you go to New York. Um, it's also a very good symbol to the rest of the world of what mankind has accomplished. So, you know, you, you could pick other cities, but in the end, New York is just the best place to go. Very, very nice setting. Excellent. Now tell us about what we're seeing right here. Obviously, using the, the suit is an integral part of the game. What additions are we seeing, and how does it impact gameplay throughout? Yeah, so not only does the suit give you the ability to play uh, cloaked, you know, and go maximum stealth, and go invisible and, and have temporary invisibility for a few seconds, which is very powerful for being a sneaky kind of player, um, you can also survive a lot of damage and gunfire by switching on armor mode at key moments, you know, when a rocket's coming at you or grenades or you're under a lot of bullet fire. Um, this allows you to adapt dynamically to the environment that you're in. And then we also have other powers in the suit as well, like uh, having night vision, thermal vision, you know, these things that allow you to be the hunter or fight in the dark. In the end, you're the ultimate weapon. You know, you're the ultimate weapon in this battlefield in the future. You're not just a soldier with, you know, body armor and cloth and whatever. You have this awesome nano suit that has all these powers that lets you turn the tide of any battle, uh, create all kinds of mayhem if that's the way that you want to play. You know, not all heroes are, are uh, kind. Equal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some guys really like uh, destroying the world when they run through it. You know, we give you the power to, to do whatever kind of destruction you want. And you need it. I mean, these aliens are really intelligent. They're really smart. They traverse the environment. You know, they, they jump up and down on stuff. Uh, 
they, they chase you around, they really challenge you, they try to get in close and then they sneak away. Um, so they challenge the styles of play that the player has as well. Talk a little bit about the level diversity. Obviously, if you go to New York, a lot of it looks the same, but it's pretty eclectic and different. So talk, yeah. talk a little bit about how you implemented change and variety in the game while keeping the setting uh, true to New York. Yeah, so we took a lot of visual language that we had in the original Crisis. This is why we call it an urban jungle. You know, we don't overgrow it with trees and, and foliage and this kind of stuff. It's because we took a lot of language from Crisis of, of terrain and hills and, you know, unevenness, this organic kind of feeling, and trans transform the city environment with that. That's why we call it urban jungle. So there's areas, you know, where you have uh, rivers and streams going through the city because of the events that have happened, much like you would in a jungle. Or if you're in a damaged environment and you walk out, you know, you might be in a cave. It might feel like being in a cave and getting on a, a valley expanse, but you're actually at an intersection. So. There's a lot of uh, a variety that we put in the environments through the type of language that we've adopted from the original crisis. Excellent, now we're facing off here, obviously, yeah, a, uh, a, a pretty tumultuous guy. battle. Tell us a little bit about the AI. You had mentioned that uh, these guys are pretty, pretty intense, right? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have a variety of aliens that we're showing here at E3. Uh, we have, you know, uh, these guys that are, we kind of nickname them stalkers, and they sneak around the environment, move around really quickly, uh, jumping up on stuff. We have grunts that are really tough and armored. They like using a lot of cover. And uh, the player here just fought his way against what we call a heavy, and he's, he takes a ton of damage. He's got a big chain gun on one arm and a rocket launcher on the other. And he, he likes to mess up the environment quite a bit, and it takes a lot of firepower to take that guy down, so. Um, there's a stalker evading some rocket fire. It's really cool. And you personally, what is your play style? I mean, obviously you're talking about how diverse they can be. I mean, do you tend to get in there and just bum rush everything? Or yeah, are you a right now, more stealthy kind of guy? I, it depends on, the, on my mood and what oh. day of the week it is. Um, generally, I like causing as much mayhem as possible <laughs> right now. I mean, our sandbox is so full of things that you can play with, you know, sticking sticky grenades on a car like this. You can use that as a trap for aliens that run by, or you could kick the car in their direction you know, drop it on their head, you know, even with the explosives. So as it gets close to them, the car blows up, the explosives blow up, you know, all kinds of destruction, all kinds of chaos. Um, <laughs> he's getting attacked by a stalker here who tried to leap on his head, you know, knock him down, take him out, so. Seems like anything could happen. Obviously, the graphics are great. Crisis, the original Crisis, known for its graphics. As we talked about in the interview, becoming known for that with the brand, I mean, it's kind of associated is that something you guys want? Or are you trying to deviate from that a little bit as well? I mean, do you want the pressure of having to be associated with having the best graphics in the industry? I, I mean, we, we always try to deliver on that and we have a good track record so far. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's Why a not keep it up? hat we're proud to wear, yeah. <laughs> okay. we keep it up. And so will this pretty much be the best looking first person shooter on consoles yeah. to date? Yeah, first person shooter on consoles and PC. You know, we established the benchmark with Crisis three years ago and even today, Crisis 1 is still considered the best looking uh, FPS on, on any platform, you know, in the world. We're not going to let Crisis 1 hold that title. We're going to, you know, kick our own butt with Crisis 2, not only on PC, but also on the consoles, so. Excellent. It's looking fantastic, man. Thanks yeah. for showing it off.